back at LA Fish Guys Aquarium Tech Talk, uh, Apex installation and setup. Uh, we've already got the Apex installed, uh, obviously not set up. The first item of business is to do a firmware update. Um, for those of you that already have Apexes and are wondering how to update it, and you've already got your Apex set up, um, I strongly recommend doing a backup, and I'll touch quickly on doing backups in just a moment. First item of business is to go to NeptuneSystems.com and get the latest firmware. So we'll go to Neptune Systems. Oops. Um, support and downloads. I don't remember if I did. Okay, downloads, firmware updates. All right, so the support tab firmware updates. Get our latest version, 4.4 for PC and Mac. PC download. We're not using a Mac, so obviously we want the PC download. I've already made a folder on Jim's computer called Neptune Apex. So once this finishes its download, which it's done, I'm going to show it in the folder. And there it is. I'm going to drag this puppy into Neptune Apex. Now it's a zip file. file. So, uh, hopefully you have a, uh, a WinZipper. Make another folder in here called Firmware. And there we go. And drag that folder into Firmware. Yes, move it. Okay, so the firmware utility has an extraction um, utility in there, has a flash utility rather. Uh, there's also instructions included if you don't know what you're doing. Updating the firmware is essentially a two-part process. Um, in some cases, three if you want to update your modules, but I know his modules will be fine. So, um, and for a module update is not done with the utility. So, what we're going to do, um, the files all go in one folder. We're going to open up the Apex Flash utility, and we're going to browse here. We don't need to browse for it because it's in the same folder. It will find the Apex automatically through the default port. Let's just double check here and look on the network for the Apex. Unlock. In fact, that reminds me. There's our Apex. It is always a good idea to disable any virus software and stuff like that. Which in this case bring that up and shut this off temporarily because a lot of times a virus software will uh, block stuff. I don't anticipate that being a problem here but I'm going to close that out. Um, go back to our utility. We've got our app Apex there. Now the two-part process is update firmware and update the web pages. Um, a lot of times when they update their firmware they may make changes to the web interface that is on the Apex base unit or brain and the Apex acts as its own web server so you want to make sure that you update both. So right now I'm going to click update firmware and it'll run through the process I'll also point out that in some cases the uh, update utility can be um, can be kind of finicky. If you run into issues, in some cases you might have virus software they didn't realize was running in the background. So, first part of our update process has completed. This is operation complete. There, we know that went well. And the next thing is to update the web pages. So I'm going to click update web pages. And it'll run through a similar process. Okay. 
and this process only takes a minute or two. Yeah, a little bit of an error, I'm going to try this again. Alright, so we've now completed our firmware update. Connect to our Apex, type in the default username and password. Hi, I'm Eric Cohen of Blue Life USA. Let me show you my product line. ClearFX Pro, filter media in a bag. Comes in three sizes for fresh water and salt water. New technology, new resins, removes phosphates, organics, and clarifies water. Safety Stop, quarantine treatment for fresh water and marine fish. Our Blue Vet RX product line consists of phosphate, aptasia, red cyano, and flatworm remedies. And our Watercolors Aquarium background comes in colors black and blue, available in four different sizes. Blue Life USA, aquarium products found in retail stores across the country. Or for more information, visit us at bluelifeusa.com. Do you enjoy watching LA Fish Guys? Do you feel like a fish guy when servicing your own aquarium? Would you like to feel like part of the LA Fish Guy team? For a limited time, get your LA Fish Guys t-shirts or embroidered polo shirts today. These 100% cotton Hanes beefy tees are $20 and the embroidered black polo t-shirts are 50% cotton and 50% polyester and are only $25. Visit MyFishTank.com, look for the LA Fish Guys link, and order your LA Fish Guy shirts today before they sell out. Some sizes may be limited and may not be available. And be sure to visit the LA Fish Guys website to see all 152 reinstated LA Fish Guys episodes, including the original 35 shows. And always, keep moving forward. One of the best things about going with an Apex is that you become one of the tens of thousands of other owners that love helping each other out. Maybe you get stuck, or maybe you just want to simply take on a new DIY project. Whatever your question is, the Neptune Systems Community Forum brings all of those thousands of users together to help you answer it. Many of the things discussed in this video series are also covered there in various posts. Or add your own question and start the conversation. That's forums.neptunesystems.com. And after you do a firmware update, it's always a good idea to go to configuration and modules here. And make sure that the module firmware is all okay. If for some reason you do an update in your module firmware modules, things like an EV8, uh, the AFS module, display module, other pro modules like PM1 or PM2, the firmware on those is not compatible with the current firmware version that you just updated. 
instead of saying OK here, it would say old. So it's always a good idea after you do a firmware update to check that. If it says old here, you do want to do uh, a module update. And the process is really simple, but it's recommended that you wait about an hour after doing a firmware update so that all the tables in the Apex are properly updated. Um, otherwise, you could corrupt your module firmware. And then essentially what you would do is you select the module that you want to update, um, EV8, display, whatever, click the update module or update firmware, submit the change and it'll update the firmware on that module. And that's just something that's done between the base unit and the module. No additional software is needed. Uh, but in this case, all of Jim's modules have firmware that is okay, so that is good. Uh, we're going to go in and check his clock. See what the clock says. Make sure that it's correct. Today is the 24th, 2015, and the time is 12:11. So that is all correct. So auto clock is working. It is daylight savings time enabled. Um, our next item of business can be to get prepared for a fusion setup. Now, this brings up another interesting topic. Outside of your home, there's two ways of connecting to your Apex. Well, technically three ways of connecting to the Apex. If you have an iPhone or smart device, there is an Apex app that is available from the App Store. But, like the second way of connecting to your Apex, which is technically the first way of connecting to your Apex, the default or embedded web browser, to utilize the Apex app or the default web browser, you have to set up on your DSL router a thing that's called port forwarding, and it essentially allows the outside world to come in through your DSL router and access the internal web server. Um, so you have to set up port forwarding. It's kind of advanced, advanced networking uh, thing that needs to be done, and, and to do that, you really need to consult the manual for, the manual for your DSL router. Uh, it's complicated. Neptune has added a program called Apex Fusion, and it's basically a cloud server. And uh, for lunch, we're going to have buffalo wings because I'm going to kill that bird. Um, oh, maybe not. Sorry, Jasmine. Um, they've created this program called Apex Fusion that works through the cloud and allows you to access your Apex controller from anywhere in the world and not have to worry about port forwarding. Moreover, on the subject of port forwarding is a thing called um, dynamic DNS and our modern DSL routers that we use at home for our high speed internet access when the power is cycled to them their outside address can change and when that address changes you have no means of knowing how to get back to your apex because you wouldn't access your apex from the outside world using the internal network address for the apex you would access the apex from the outside world using the DSL routers address to the outside world completely different. So on that note, there's a thing called Dynamic DNS and there's programs out there that you would subscribe to that uh, you have an application running on your, on your PC that sends notification to this outside server and tells it what the new IP address is. The beauty of Fusion is it eliminates all those headaches. So we're going to prepare his Apex for Fusion right now and to do so we go into configuration and uh, network setup in here and we're going to enable fusion and enable fusion control so fusion enable is set up fusion enable uh, or fusion control is enabled as well so that is good um, at this time you can also change the default password um, we can also add things uh, like his email address for his um, email alerts and stuff like that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, look something up right now. Verizon. Now he's with Verizon. Verizon. Darn it. Verizon. Text. So if you want your uh, your uh, Apex to send you 
an email to your cell phone or your you know text messaging. Uh, this is a, where you would end up doing it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and set this up right now. Um, look away for a moment so I can punch in Jim's text address. You want your phone number on there, Jim? All right, and and uh, <coughs> most cell phone carriers. Um, if you Google like AT and T is MMS dot AT T dot net, your number at MMS dot AT T dot net, or for Verizon, it's your number at VTEX dot com. Um, you can send an email to your cell phone via text message, essentially. And then there's also the option for an alternate address, which would be Jim at Aquarium dash design dot com. Okay, um, this is where I'm going to need your cell phone, Jim. need to go get some email settings in here so I'm going to take a look at his email account set up okay so for the email you have to contact your ISP or know your SMTP settings to get this properly set up um, I'm getting it set up for Jim here but each person's settings are going to vary, so keep that in mind. Do you know your email password, Jim? Okay, so figured out Jim's email settings. Um, his phone just went off here, and we got our test message. When you set this up, there's an option for email test here, and when you click update settings, it'll send the test. And this is basically just a status telling us his temperature and some other basic stuff. Um, but that does mean that we are looking good. So that means his Apex is working. So next item of business is going to be setting up Apex Fusion. So stay tuned uh, and then we'll get on to connecting your Apex to Apex Fusion.